Okay, my friends, Manifest Destiny once again. I just was getting ready to post this video on light and how the particles flip as they spin through space. And now they're getting big into the spin because I've been showing this over and over and over. Now, they're talking about the Pauli exclusion principle. And what that means is two explosive particles will always push away from each other. But the dark matter can just lay on top of it. And they've never seen the dark matter before. I've been showing it for five or six years now. And it appears that they're finally taking notice of it. And we're going to be looking at this on PBS in a second. I can show you everything that they're talking about. And I have shown it over and over. This is light spinning. The Pauli exclusion principle means that these bright glowy parts want to push each other apart. The black parts can lay right on top of each other. And that's where they are, right in here. These are where the black parts are. The, the white parts, when they come around and they slam into each other, they say, get away from me. That's the exclusion principle. White pushes away. Black says, I don't care. I'll just, I want whites to come right over here on top of me. And I can lay on top of myself. That's fine. I don't care about that. They will, and I can show you this, and I will show you that right this instant. This is light being accelerated into a venturi. And the reason it accelerates is because there's a, what's I, I'm going to call a tuned venturi that only allows the white spray through and it keeps the black balls out. And when I say that, they are particles. And this is the actual particle itself accelerating and then the black portion separates from the white portion and you get the white sh showers and the black comes right back together. But you can see them laying on top of each other. Now, let's see what the particle looked like before it exploded. I'll show you how it sets itself up. Now, let me see if I can find it. They are around here somewhere. I got so much of this stuff. Oh, boy, hold on a second. Okay, the, what I'm going to show you is a video in a second. I only watched the first minute or two, but I could see exactly what I am, have been showing for years. This is a red light. Red light can accelerate. And all light has the same particles, they're photons, and they're made up just like this a box of black and white particles. And they only show up just before they explode at the venturi here. And then it creates an absolutely enormous amount of energy because it creates fission. The black particles separate from the white right at this point right here. And then they come back together. That's fission, that's fusion. And in the middle, you have raw energy. Don't forget now, that's the particle coming this way. And don't forget, it flips. You see the white here? And this time the white's on the top. It's the black is on the bottom. This is that particle. It's the same particle. It's just that when you take it, like this blue one, see? This is all the same particle. It's going so fast that we see it all in one big line at once. But it's the same particle. It's spinning to the right, which means it drifts to the left. It was accelerated. It appears to be slowing down. I don't know exactly. I'm not certain of that, but that, that's what it looks like to me. This I know 100% certain that it is the particle that was coming in here because I have other shots of it doing what they call, well, here, let me show you. It's, uh, where is it? All right, this is what they call neutrino oscillation. These are um, muon neutrinos and electron neutrinos. The white one is an electron neutrino, the black is a muon neutrino. As they stack up at the venturi, they actually show themselves. First they're sideways like that, then they twist sideways. Now this is a direct line exactly right into the venturi, so these are much more excited because they're stacking right on top of each other. And that's when they flip. You see the flip here, the black on the bottom, now it's white on the bottom. That's, they have all kinds of names for these things, but now they're just nothing more than photons or two electrons back to back. The electron is white and a black ball, just one of each. And two of them glued together is a photon. Photons will bounce off you as light. One of these by itself will burn into you as, a, as electricity basically is what it is, electronic vapor. Now, at the Venturi, the actual particles separate. I did show you that, and this is in the extreme detail. I think I showed you in that already, but maybe I didn't, but here it is. This is where they were together, and now they're not. All right? They 
separated. They went their own separate way. Now you can see the black is right on top of each other. These whites will never, ever, 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 ever allow that. They just want to get away from each other. That's why you see this absolutely phenomenal amount of increase of energy. Because they say, get away from me. It's I can't. What am I going to do? <laughs> and they just start fighting like hell. The black ones, they just come around. Look, they land right on top of each other. There's one here. There's a whole batch of them laying. All they want to do is catch on to the white ones again. And then they become stable. They are unstable on their own. It's just the nature of the particle. It's a positive to a negative. You can't take a, a bar magnet and just take half of it and throw it away and it becomes negative. No, it, it'll become a positive and a negative. You break it and it's a, another positive and a negative. You break it again, it's another positive and a negative. You cannot separate the charges, although we did. Fission and fusion. And the reason is because of the tuning of the Venturi. And there's a lot of other things we can do here. And then we can harvest energy right there and create portable, walking around electric energy in vast quantities for that much. Zero. Once again, just so you know, this is not just me talking. This is CERN. They want muon neutrinos, electron neutrinos, a black ball and a white ball. Highly accelerated is when they see them, because they crash them. But using their 100 billion particles, and then they have no idea where they came from. We saw them as light. We saw them manifest themselves as a black and white ball attached to another black and white ball as a photon. Then we saw them separate as a black ball, the muon, which can be right on top of itself. Yes, exactly, I agree, as we're going to see in this video. And the white showers turns into a white showers. And absolutely no question that that's exactly what we're seeing here. No question whatsoever. We know they were attached together as neutrinos. We know that they are now a muon its own separate way and electron showers. Of this, there is no question. Now, I'm almost certain I show you this. I get lost in this because I do a ton of these. But this is the particle separating. And we can see the spin. That's exactly what you would see if you were a machinist looking at a drill bit spinning through there. This is a single slit, so it's not overlapping flaps. These are repulsion patterns. And the blacks fit right in between, which don't care. They can step or jump right on top of each other. No problem whatsoever. You see that? If you can't understand what's going on here, and you probably can't just by looking at it, but I can because I studied it for a very long time. The Venturi is right up through here, and the light is forcing its way in through that Venturi. And when it does, you can see it actually is spinning. You see this? You can see them coming up around here spinning this way. The whole thing is spinning as a circle. The black is between the particle of the white. Remember we had the blacks and the whites? Well, that is the separation of powers. And the black will, will fit right in between these explosive particles. It'll just squish them like, well, you can see what's happening. It's quite obvious. And the more impact is the more white. This is, you, these are really the trailing edge of the light particles. And every one of them is a particle. And they're going this way. Think about this very carefully. If the light was spinning, which it is, hold on. Let me get my little visual representation of what's going on here. So, Roger, what is going on? Well, this particle here is that particle there. And it's spinning through this way, up around, and smashing in up here. It's smashing all the way around, but we're visualizing it from here. So we're seeing the impact of it from this. But if you were on the other side looking at it, you'd see the same thing. So what it's doing is it's coming up around and smashing in up at the top here, and which forces it to spin back around. That's what causes a spin. Now, it's, it's push to shove. This is pushing against the other particles that are out here, pushing it back. So it forces it to spin. Now, at the end, after it starts to lose its really velocity, they just go flying off into space. You see them? And there they go. And, but they're all the same particles. And then that's the ball of them. It's a pulse and another pulse and another pulse. See, that's another pulse just shooting off onto, into Never Never Land. Can you see that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, Rod Warren does this. 
he has got the most unbelievable shots of things just incredible i've been working with him now it's got to be seven years six seven years and um and all he does is just experiment. He doesn't want to be involved. In, he has nothing to do with the atomic part of it whatsoever. That's all my stuff. But, but without him, I couldn't prove any of this. I did, this was just a godsend. Absolutely unbelievable. And the stuff I can show is just over the top. And and it's there, everybody in the physics world gave me a real hard time. Said, oh, you can't see this stuff with a smartphone. You're crazy. No, absolutely not. It's fully understood. You can see cosmic radiation. This is nothing, and which is nothing more than high energy particles. And this is about as high energy as you can get. If you don't see the energy coming off of this, you got some. You got to get to the optician right away, or whatever they call them, ophthalmologist. All right, this is what light looks like when it's just sort of spinning it through space coming at you. We're coming sideways, we're looking at it sideways. Now, what if we were looking from the front, looking at it? What would it look like then? Well, let's see, I do have a shot that shows it, and it's stunning. We're looking at light coming at us. This is the leading tip of the light. This is a tip. This is a tip. These are troughs behind it. So this is coming at us, spinning like crazy. You can see it spinning. They're all spinning. They're all spinning. You see them? And you can see two, four, six, you know, they're making all these patterns. There's another six pack here, another six pack here, another six pack here. Something's going on with that, the way they interact with each other. The sixes interact with the other six, with the other six, with the other six. Anyway, this is the leading tip coming at us. Now, the reason these are dark and the rest of them are sort of whiter, you know, glowyish, is because these are impacting harder and being crushed basically in, an, in a forward impact. These are being crushed in the trough because every particle pushes against every other particle. So they all have their own fields now. As they start to circle like this, they create a field around themselves called Higgs field. I'll show you those in a second. And those Higgs fields are what each one of them pushes away from each other. So you'll see them all in exactly certain patterns away from each other. Let's look at the Higgs fields and I'll show you why every now and then you're going to get one similar to this that crushes and it can actually change its color state. All right, what I just showed you is exact, that is exactly these pictures. These are those fields that are coming at us, and the tips of them are, have the black spots on them. And the troughs are in between here. And occasionally something will pinch, and this is what happened pinched right here. Look at that. It pinched a, a field against a field, against a field, against a field coming this way and instead of being red which they were all red coming through this it's what they call a coherent frequency that means they're all exactly the same frequency coming out of that crystal which is the laser so this is not the same frequency anymore but it's coming back to the same frequency you see it's very interesting this is a this is a very very unusual shot um, but that is a pinch that turned it blue which is the next step up of excitation. These are spinning, you know, sort of slow, the, the red. This is spinning fast. You see it coning way up. All right, here's another shot of Higgs fields coming out. That is the Venturi. And there, this little white sprays of stuff coming up here are the actual raw electrons. And then when they smash into the atmosphere out here and they hit other particles they start to spin like crazy now this one here this is the only time i've seen this is a white particle and i believe it interacted with another higgs field and caused a very strange effect i'll show you in a second however my interpretation of this is instead of a right hand spin which is what all particles are supposed to do as they come out of here and they smash into space First of all, we, this is only an electron. That's, that's, that's the white side only. When it hits the dark matter, it spins. It's supposed to spin to the right. It's just a rule. I didn't make it. <laughs> it's just a rule. Now, that one, I think, is spinning to the left. So it's actually drawn itself into itself. Like, when it hits, when it hits it's, it's pulling 
the particle back in. When this goes, it's pushing the particles back out. So that's why I think it's drawn itself into itself, and that's what we're seeing here, a reverse spin. Could be wrong. But here's what I see when it hits one of these. I think this is what hit. Let's take a look at that. All right, so here's the Higgs fields coming through, and I believe that's the white particle, and I believe what happened here, because I can see some sort of a definition to it. It has some pattern here going on with the white and the black, but I think it's, like I say, I think it's a reverse spinner instead of a right spinner. It's a, a, a reverse spinner. And when it's smashed into this particle, or when it's field, let's put it that way, interacted with this particle, and you can see it's right on top of the particle. So the field is almost like, I don't know exactly what happened, but this is the result. You know, this is about half a little <laughs> no idea like that's a half a light field I don't know I have no clue whatsoever but we're picking up these particles with smartphones you could do this yourself I've shown how to do this very 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 simple to do and everybody basically has this equipment in, right in their own house almost everybody's got smartphones now all you need is a smartphone but you got to put it right up next to where you're getting this extreme luminosity and then you've got to muddle around with the pictures and know how they work with these apps and things I don't know how to do this stuff Rod does it his nephew um, Dylan now is doing it. Dylan Carpenter, absolutely amazing. And Rod Warren, and you can see his, you can find his channel on YouTube. He's he's not like a, a, an atomic guy or anything. He's just an experimenter guy, and he's he shows stuff. He's like a one minute video. He's been doing a lot of them lately. It just crazy looking stuff you, you, you don't know what to make of it, and nobody does. But you can see that there's interaction, just astounding interactions. Um, and I can't account for them. These I can, because I've studied them for seven years, six, seven years. And he was gracious and fabulous to work with me. And, um, and I think I've shown pretty good evidence to, to support my theory. And that's what I needed was to be able to support my theory. And I think I have quite well, atomic flood theory. All right, this is about the time I started with Rod was back around 2014, 2015, turned smartphone into po pocket cosmic ray detectors, astrophysics using a smartphone, scientists develop app to turn smartphones into cosmic ray detectors, cosmic ray detector futurism, smartphones into cosmic ray detectors. This was not something that was unknown. And what is a cosmic ray? All a cosmic ray is is exactly what we're looking at. A cosmic ray at high energy protons, well we're looking at photons that move through space at nearly the speed of light. Well ours are moving through space at the speed of light. And that's what a cosmic ray is, but it's a high energy, high energy, high energy. And if you don't see high energy, you need to to get some kind of bifocals. This is what we started with. This is what we ended at the Venturi with. If that's not high energy, there is no high energy. <laughs> that is just atomic explosion, and it literally is. We fission right here, and we fusion right there. All right, here's Rodney. He's taking his little laser, just like this, and he's shining it through these nails and he if you tune these correctly and you have you do this right you can get the patterns i was showing before but you, that's a little bit of work to do he just threw this together so he could make a quick thing so you people can look at this and do it your own self now watch what he's doing all he's going to do is shine the light through the nail slit and this is a single slit and then on his back wall, it's going to show the interference pattern. Then he's going to spray stuff in the air to show the light coming through the air and how it makes interference patterns in the air just as well. Watch. Just a standard laser, just like this. Turns it on. Turns off the lights in the room. All right, that's on the back wall. That was the interference pass. This is a single slit now, so that's not a flappy way. Now here's what he's doing in the air. You see it? He's, that's a spray of water in the air. What this thing is doing, light spins. All right, what you're seeing is a whole batch of spinning light coming. These are all spinning light patterns. And 
the main impact is because it's coming out of the venturi through the center. Now, you could do this at home. You could, a lot of people have little tiny lasers. You know, they're, they're not expensive either. And all you need is a cell phone. Now, he apparently, oops, excuse me. Uh, the way I understand it, and I didn't do any of this stuff myself. I did it for a little bit, I, but I was not competent. <laughs> Rodney's just the, the guy. He's the guy. Now, I believe the way he told me, he was just using his uh, selfie one, or I, I don't know where even the selfie one is. It's on this side, pointing down at it, and and getting the um, pattern right right there because it's so energetic. And these are only CMOS, exact same thing they're using at, at the, the Large Hadron Collider to see their stuff. It's no difference whatsoever. CMOS is CMOS. It's complementary oxide, we used to call it silicates, but it's um, semiconductors. And they are different transition metals that can pick up different frequencies very, very, very elegantly. And we can see all the different colors, we can see all the different... You need intense luminosity. That's the key. Because they're using the cell phones to 15 or, or uh, 7 years ago, something like that, as cosmic ray detectors. They're nothing more than high energy particles. I'm sure I went over this 4 or 5 times, but I'm sorry, this is something that's too important to just fluff over. Alright, I guess it's time for a long one. I, my research goes back 50 years and I knew back then that everything had to be a dipole. There was no such thing as a solid nucleus that was nothing but positiveness. It had to be there had to be a negative and a positive in the center. It couldn't be anything else. Just like magnets push each other apart, you can't have a positive and a negative that are totally independent of each other without them coming together. It's just impossible. I knew this 50 years ago, and this was my paper to prove it, and as far as I'm concerned, I did prove it, and, and now I can prove it because of Rodney's experiments. So we're going to get into this. It's going to take some time to look over, but this is too important to overlook because if what I'm right, what I'm showing is right, and I can, I'm pretty damn sure it's right, we should be able to get free energy very, very quickly and portable and literally free to cover all of the devices that need energy. And that is a game changer for the entire world. In, in disasters, boop, bring them right in, put them on a the counter. You don't have to have an energy grid. You don't have to burn things. You don't have to have combustive gases. You, 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 your cars would just run. You know, I know it's going to be a little disruptive in the, in the economy, but the economy will adapt very, very well to this, and it will take a lot of the pressure off of everybody trying to move into somebody else's country to have special things like we have in the United States. We're having a disaster at the border because these people want a good life. Well, you can't have a good life without power. <laughs> That's just the way it is. If you have power, you can do virtually anything. If we can make free power, we're golden. And I think we can make free power. And I've been showing this over and over. I showed you my light research. The laser comes through there at extremely high energy. You collect it in thin film transition metal deposits. You bring it in and you harvest it into whatever you want. And it runs whatever you want as a load. And then the circuit is complete. And you could run these for virtually nothing I mean literally nothing because you could take some of this and keep it going. We saw that energy value increase it, it, well they say 200 times. I agree with that. There was such a glow of energy around there. There's no way you can deny that. So if we get free energy, I'm pretty pretty up for that. All right, like I said, I haven't seen this yet. I just started in. I got up to oh, I don't know, a minute or two in here. PBS space time. No, somebody just sent me to this. I, I, I get a, people sending me things all day long. What do you think of this? What do you think? Well, and I like that. It's important. This is how you re, to do research because they say, oh, you're saying this, you're saying that. And this guy was sort of against me. He, he's saying, oh, yeah, what do you say about this? Well, here's what I'm going to say about it. I don't know what I'm going to say about it. <laughs> I know I haven't seen it yet. Let's, let's look at it together. I just showed you what my research shows. Let's see what they say. And the first minute or so I could, went into this, I could see they're saying exactly the same thing I'm saying. Now, why they're saying it today, I don't know. But let's see. Today, I'm going to explain why you are not falling through your chair right now, using one simple fact and one object. 
The fact is that all electrons are the same as each other, and the object is a structurally critical item of my clothing. There's a chance that this episode could get a little weird, and I mean quantum weird. By now, we've established that quantum spin is very weird. Now, we talked all about that recently, how electrons have spin but aren't really rotating, and about how you need to turn an electron around twice, 720 degrees, to get it back to its starting position. They are, we say, spin half, because one normal rotation only gets you halfway around. That particular weirdness is not just another cute case of quantum mechanics being a bit silly. The fact that some particles have this property is the entire reason that stuff in our universe has structure and that matter doesn't immediately collapse. All right, I don't, I, I disagree with that. The reason that we have solid particles is because of that black ball wants nothing more than have it be encrusted with white around it. That's its whole mission in life is to attach to white stuff. Now, from what I'm hearing from him, he's going to go into the Pauli exclusion principle. This was about where I stopped before. Let's see what, because I know about the Pauli exclusion principle. All that means is you can't have two things in the same place. And I always thought it was really silly. But it does have some effect because if you look up the cashmere effect, if you take two electron, two, two of anything, and bring them close enough together, when they get really, really close, they push apart. Because there's going to be electrons on the surface of this one and electrons on the surface of that. They push each other apart. Because everything is coated with electrons. That's why we've never seen inside to see the dark matter until we crashed them into the Venturi. So, he's going to be talking about the Pauli expansion principle and how particles can lay right on top of each other, which I showed you the black particles. And I'm going to show you every time he says something, I'm going to go to my evidence. So I know we've, sh I've probably shown you this five times already, but I don't care. You're going to see it again. It's the source of the Pauli exclusion principle. And today I'm going to show you why this simple property makes it possible for us to have nice things in our universe. Particles with spin half, or more generally any half integer spin, 3 on 2, 5 on 2, etc., are called fermions and include all of the particles that we think of as matter, from electrons to quarks to the neutrinos. Okay, the fermions are the reactive part, the white ones. The bosons are the black ones, muons, and I call them dark matter. The other spin behavior is to have integer spin. Spin 1, for example, is the much more sensible case of a single 360 degree rotation getting you back to the starting point. Integer spin particles are bosons, and they are the force carrying particles like bosons are the black particles that I showed you. Photons with spin 1, or the Higgs particle with spin 0. It's possible to stack as many bosons on top of each other as you like. Exactly what I showed you. Those are the bosons, the black particles, and they surround the white ones. The white ones, boom, they say, stay away from me. For example, in a laser beam, there's no limit to the number of photons that you can add. All of them are in the same quantum state, but not fermions. No two fermions can share the same quantum state. That's all. These are repulsive. They stay away from each other, but they're still... I, I don't think these, these are laying on top of each other, yes. These have, those, those Higgs fields I showed you, are the fields that they, these particles create to say, stay out of this region, this is my region. Basically, that's what a Higgs field is. And they, they're created by fermions. Which is why electrons can't occupy the same energy states in atoms. Without this, electrons in multi-electron atoms would all fall into the same lowest energy state. What, ha what he's talking about there, Electron flip theory, totally different than Bohr theory. Bohr theory says that for every proton, which is one of these, like hydrogen would have one proton and one electron. I say no, absolutely not. It has 1839 electrons and one more influence that wants to try to get into the dark matter in here, but they say no, we have enough electrons, you have to stay away. That creates the quantum state. So instead of having just one big gigantic proton, 
which it doesn't work at all anyway, because you have isotopes, you have nuclear decay, you have neutrons and turning into protons and protons turning into neutrons. And, you know, it just doesn't work. And they know it doesn't work, but they have nothing other to work with other than the Bohr theory. Well, now you do. It's electron flood theory, which means every single particle there is, every single particle there is, is constructed of these smallest particles that I showed you before, the black and white balls. And we can actually separate the black and white balls as I showed you. This is electron flood theory, and it solves 100% of every material interaction. If you can present any single thing to me that I can't solve with electron flood theory, I would love to see it, because I haven't found one single thing yet. The electron can separate from the muon. Right? This is, we've never seen anything but the white. That's the only thing that radiates back. A muon does not absorb. It does not emit. It does not concuss. It's strictly gravity. And that's what happens. It sucks in other white particles, and that's all it wants to do is be attracted to them. Now, that's electron flood theory. That's it. Case is closed. 1839 electrons make a proton. And as you, they come in balls like this. All right, and so you add another 1839, and you're going to get a, heli a hydrogen 2. It comes hydrogen 1, 2, and 3, and then you get into helium, which has more balls. And then you get bigger and bigger and bigger until you get a, you know, uranium or something, just a gigantic, huge, huge, gigantic snowball of particles like this that wants to fall apart. They can't, they can't stay to well, well together. And, and it, then there's a lot to understand. You got to get into thermochemistry, and you know there's a there's a ton of things to understand about the bits and pieces that are inside here. But that's what I did. That's what I love to do. And that's what this whole thing was about. That's what this whole thing was about. You cannot have a nucleus that does not have have um, you know a positive and a negative. You can't have a nucleus that. It's a, just a big positive. It's absolutely insanity. It always was. So I guess we're just going to have to keep going and see what my little friend here has to say. Before we do, he says electrons in the multi-electron atoms would all fall into the same lowest energy state. Which, here's what really happens. The black particles don't care about being on top of each other, but the white particles want to stay away. So they end up pushing all the black ones the, the, they're a black and a white, a black and a white, but the, the black will go to the inside and the white will go on the outside and another white will go on the outside, and a white, 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 and all the blacks will, co will co congregate in the center. So this would be a completely encrusted ball like this and all of the outside particles would be the white particles. And inside you wouldn't see it, but all the black particles would be inside, all congratulated all on, top, on top of each other. That's gravity. That's basically gravity. So. That's what we're seeing. It accounts for gravity. It accounts for dark matter, which is the muon. It accounts for, we can see them separate. It accounts for the wobble and the spin and the neutrinos and the neutrino showers and the muons and the bosons and everything else. So let's see what they have to say. But this is the entire thing. That's the new model. You know, I did all the doodles. I could do all doodles all day long. I knew I could write all these little symbols and things. They, they were absolutely meaningless. They were designed, and constants and this and that were designed to cover up problems because there's problems. They couldn't count. You can't count for gravity. Fermi Lab, Don Lincoln, who was a, he's a big shot down at Fermi Lab, he doesn't even know electrons are, I mean, light is a particle. He thinks light is a wave. There's no particles. That's what he told me. If I'm wrong, Don, tell me I'm wrong, buddy. I want to debate you, my friend, because I, as far as I'm concerned, you guys are wasting a hell of a lot of money walking around in circles. And not to talk to me after the evidence that I provided is, is, uh, is not correct at all. Not acceptable. Okay, so they're not going to fall in on themselves according to the electron flood theory. All atoms would be the minimum possible size, and there would be no such thing as chemistry, you know, nice things like solids or molecules. The non-overlappability of fermions is called the Pauli exclusion principle. I'm going to show you what... I call it push to shove. Anytime you have a white particle, it pushes the other particle, and that other particle shoves it back. It's called push to shove. That's the new term. This is inevitable behavior of groups of particles that have two properties. One, 
this weird rotational symmetry, and two, indistinguishability, which is just the fact that all electrons, for example, are exactly the same. Exactly. I showed you the red ones, I showed you the green ones, the half spin and so forth. It's just a white on the top and a white on the bottom. There is no observable change when you swap two electrons. Combining spin behavior and indistinguishability gives us something called the spin statistics theorem, which sounds complicated, but I'm going to derive it with just some basic arithmetic and my belt. What do you think I was going to say? Before we get to my belt, let me remind you about spinners. We talked about them in a recent episode, but for now, just know that it's just the type of wave function that fermions have, and that it has this property that it returns to its starting state with a 720 degree rotation, not 360. In that previous episode, we saw this amazing animation of an object rotating while being fixed by bands to its surrounding environment. Th those are nothing more than than um, magnetic flux lines. If it's spinning, the magnetic flux, and it's bashing into other particles that are in front of it, they're pushing their magnetic fields against these magnetic fields, so you end up with these, these flux lines flowing away. Just, I mean, it's just obvious. It's just, anyway. Crazily, the bands disentangle every 720 degrees. So, a spinner's rotational weirdness is not necessarily all that quantum, it's a natural function of how it's connected to the universe. So, allow me to introduce you to the belt trick, first conceived by Paul Dirac himself. It goes like this. Hold the ends of the belt in each hand so the belt is flat. Let's think of the belt buckle as a particle, say an electron, and the belt is its connection to whatever, the universe or maybe to another electron. Now, rotate the electron a full 720 degrees so you have a double twist. Now, I'm going to untwist it without rotating either end of the belt. Watch. Now, at this point, I'm letting go of the buckle, but the important thing is that the orientation of the belt ends don't change with respect to each other. And there you go. The twists are gone. So, the system under these sorts of rotations is a spinner because a 720 degree twist is topologically equivalent to no twist. Simple translation of the ends transforms between the states. On the other hand, if we rotate one end 360 degrees, we can't untangle the belt if we keep the ends fixed. We can think of both ends of the belt as spinner particles, like electrons. And in that case, we can do another experiment. What happens if the ends exchange positions? If we're careful not to rotate either end with respect to each other, then the belt ends up with a single twist in it, equivalent to a 360 degree rotation of one end. So it seems that for spinners, a 360 degree rotation is equivalent to the particles switching places. This is slightly worrying. If we're using our hands as analogies for electrons, then we just demonstrated that it makes a difference if we switch their locations. And that's a problem if electrons are supposed to be indistinguishable, which is one of the critical ingredients of the spin statistics theorem. We'll come back to how electrons can have this property and yet still be indistinguishable. Okay. All right, let's just talk about what property he's talking about. He's talking about spin. I'll show you the spin that happens to him. I'm not sure this is what he means, but this is what I can see for spin. These are photons, which are nothing more than back-to-back -back electrons. As they come in at high speed and stack up against themselves, instead of being flat, they twist sideways. This is called neutrino oscillation. And then they come into a box state. And the only reason this one's boxed up here is because it's exactly straight into the venturi. The rest of them turn, they go flat, and then they turn sideways, even way up here, because they're not right in a direct line of sight. Now, this is the same particle. This is the same ray of light. But it's we're seeing it in two spots at the same time because it's traveling so fast, we're one shot, and we're picking up the same particle. And it was probably that same particle here, too. And as it concusses, it gets brighter and brighter, and then it explodes at the venturi. Now, that's, we're seeing these twists, and, you know, they call this all kind of weird and neutrino oscillations, and they really don't know what to make of this because they don't understand the venturi, and nobody understands electron flood theory, that every electron has a muon attached to it. That's what it is. All right, you see that right there? 
as far as I'm concerned, these are bar magnets back to back and before they really concuss and they show up as their box of particles and then explode, this is what they look like in a magnetic field. That right there is two bar magnets back to back, which is a light particle. Now watch what it looks like. Let me come up a little bit if I can. Watch what it looks like when I put this on top. You see the dark around the white stripe in the middle? That's what, that's what magnetism and a field looks like. The field affects everything around it, just like that affects everything around its field. Now this, the one I just showed you, is an unconcussed particle. These are concussing, and I believe that changes, that flips their field status so that the black is on the outside and the white is on. Well, actually, that's the way this is, too. <laughs> I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. They're exactly identical. <laughs> the two blacks are on the outside and the white is on the inside. So, I think I'm showing some pretty good evidence that should be examined. Because if we can get this broken apart like I just showed, we're golden, man. we got free energy.